morning. I am honored to be here today with my fellow House Republican colleagues. Today's historic Supreme Court decision is a victory for the sanctity of life. It will save countless innocent children. House Republicans are incredibly grateful for the pro-life movement's tireless efforts for decades, leading to this day to give a voice to the voiceless and protect our most vulnerable, unborn babies. As a new mom, I know there is nothing more extraordinary than the miracle of life. Hearing Sam's heartbeat for the first time, I'm gonna cry, was the greatest blessing and gift for our family. And I stand unified with my Republican colleagues in protecting and promoting the right to life. I'm proud to introduce a pro-life leader and our ranking member of Energy and Commerce, Kathy McMorris Rogers. First of all, I thank God for this Down. day. Down. Thank God that his mercies are new each day and he is the giver of life. And I ask for the next 50 years and beyond in our country, how are we going to define the greatest human rights issue of our generation? This Supreme Court decision marks a chance for us to restore hope, restore hope and healing to every family in this country, moms and children at every stage of life. And may it begin with each one of us doing our part to protect and celebrate all life in this greatest experiment in ever, <laughs> greatest experiment in self-governance that the world has ever known. However, Speaker Pelosi and the Democrats are forcing an extreme agenda on America through their Abortion on Demand Until Birth Act. It would nationalize abortion all across this nation, making America just as radical as China and North Korea. It legalizes discriminatory abortions at every stage based upon sex, race, or disability. It overrides state laws that protect women from coercion. There's no part of this that celebrates the life, the dignity, the value of every life. I think about my friend, Chloe. Chloe is a beautiful, smart young lady with Down syndrome. And at 18, she's appeared before the UN twice and spoken. And she, and she told the world, embrace, don't erase Down syndrome. She's helped pass laws at the state level that would make sure that parents, when they receive that prenatal diagnosis, of having a child, a baby with Down syndrome, that they would actually get accurate information as to the potential of that life. Democrats want to eliminate laws like Chloe's. We must stand together and say, enough. The court affirmed today that every life is worth living. My hope, my prayer is that America will reclaim our identity as a nation whose God-given rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness Amen. for all. And I'm pleased to introduce a gentleman who's made it his life's mission to protect life and reclaim life in America, Chris Smith, gentleman from New Jersey. Thank you so much. Uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, is a brand new opportunity to defend the weakest and most vulnerable from the violence of abortion. And that includes the baby and the mother, the co-victim of every abortion. For decades, right up to this very moment, abortion advocates have gone to extraordinary lengths to ignore, trivialize, and cover up the battered baby victim. They have aggressively fostered a culture of denial, disrespect, a culture of death, and a bias against babies. You know, back in 1973, the Supreme Court, uh, in an in infamous decision called Roe versus Wade, which you all know about, said we need not resolve the difficult question of when human life begins. They sidestepped it and then legalized abortion throughout pregnancy. Justice Byron White at the time called that an exercise in raw judicial power. The Alito uh, majority opinion issued today, just a couple of hours ago, at long last recognizes the need for elected representatives at the local and federal level to take the action to, about abortion. Hopefully it'll be on the side of protection, and, but as Kathy Morris Rogers said a moment ago, there is a bill pending right now that is an existential threat to the lives and dignity of unborn children. It would allow abortion right to birth and would eviscerate every single modest pro-life policy from, 
from women's right to know laws uh, to parental notification statutes throughout the entire country. It passed the House last September. Uh, every one of us voted and spoke against it, and it's pending in the Senate. So while this is a major step forward, uh, it, is, it also means that we're in an area where we've got to fight even harder to defend these innocent children. And again, as I think all of you know, with ultrasound, the visibility of an unborn child is more apparent than ever before. Uh, the other side says it's not a human being. Well, what is it that you're watching? When, when mothers give birth to a new baby, what, uh, long before that, what are the pictures that are on the refrigerator? The pictures of the ultrasound of that unborn child. Birth is an event that happens to each and every one of us. It's not the beginning of life, and we want to protect all life from womb to tomb. Thank you. It's my honor to Ann, uh, introduce Ann Wagner, uh, who's the prime sponsor of the Born Alive Act. Ann. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I am. I'm Ann Wagner, and I represent Missouri's second congressional district. And I will say today, as a mother and a, a grandmother, I am so incredibly grateful and gratified that the Supreme Court has finally overturned Roe versus Wade. This is an historic moment for families, for mothers, and for the precious unborn children who cannot protect themselves. Today, we do give voice to the voiceless. I have always been clear that every child deserves a chance to live. I will always stand for life. And I am hopeful that the state legislatures across the country will take action and swiftly pass protections for our vulnerable babies. The Democrats' radical pro-abortion agenda has been forced on Americans for four, far too long, nearly 50 years. Democrats, as has been stated in the U.S. House and Senate, support abortion on demand up to the moment of birth and even the minute after, at taxpayers' expense. That position is simply unconscionable and incompatible with the views of most Americans. This decision is a victory for the pro-life movement and for the generations generations of Americans who never gave up hope. People like my mother-in-law, Loretta Wagner, who started this in 1973, founded Missouri Right to Life, uh, a pregnancy center called Our Ladies Inn, the March for Life on the state capitol, helped write the Hyde Amendment with Henry Hyde. It is generations of Americans who are so happy that, um, uh, that they haven't, or never gave up hope that's what I would say, that the Supreme Court would do what is right and return this issue to the states. It will save countless innocent lives. We are entering a new era of freedom, of freedom for the unborn, and I am proud to have always been on the side of pro my pro-life brothers and sisters who stand here with me today and all across America. We always knew we would realize true freedom for all Americans. I thank you, and it is my pleasure and my honor to introduce a pro-life advocate, gentlelady from Minnesota, Michelle Fishbach. And thank you very much. This is certainly a day that pro-lifers have been waiting for for 49 years. Today's Supreme Court decision was a step to protect the most precious and basic right, the right to life. Roe versus Wade was unconstitutional. The pro-life community has always known this. <clears throat> Every innocent life is precious from conception until natural death. But for nearly five decades, abortion has remained one of the biggest tra tragedies of our nation. Roe put judges in charge of abortion policy, imposing laws legislated by unelected judges that left Americans with no voice. Now, the American people will be able to decide the issue of abortion through their elected officials. This is what democracy looks like. Elected leaders accountable to the people they represent that propose and pass laws that people support. The Constitution gives the people this job and the people are ready to protect life. Thank you very much and it is my honor to, in to introduce Representative Julia Letlow. Thank you. Thank you. 
I want to begin today by recognizing the historic significance of this one moment in time. Today's ruling is an answer to prayers and a shining beacon of hope for the American people. We are here because of nearly five decades, our strong pro-life advocates never wavered in their commitment for life. This journey has had many, many ups and downs, but they never gave up. Their faith and perseverance has been our movement's guiding light. We are here today because of them. This is their day, their victory, one I never thought I would see in my lifetime. And our country owes them a tremendous debt of gratitude. When we talk about what we have fought for, it is this simple truth. Every soul is precious and deserves life. As a mom, I can tell you the bond that grows between you and your child over those nine months is a sacred miracle. It is something you feel in every moment, from the second you find out you're expecting to months later when you watch your precious and innocent child take those first beautiful breaths. While today is a monumental win for the unborn, I would like to note that being pro-life is about more than saving a child's life. It's a commitment to supporting our mothers. As policymakers, we must work together to bring forward legislation that helps families build nurturing home environments where children thrive and build healthy and happy lives. In today's ruling, the Supreme Court made the right decision by moving this debate to where it belongs, in the hands of the people's representatives. And while we know that much work lies ahead, let us take this moment and honor this history that we are witnessing in our own moment in time. Years from now, we will tell our children and grandchildren about the day when the United States finally and firmly stood for life. Thank you, and I yield to my new member, Representative Myra Flores from Texas. Alleluia. I woke up this morning praying for this, and I never thought that it would happen. This was a big win, not only for South Texas, because we are pro-life, somos pro vida, but it's also a big win for our country. If we want to see real change in bringing crime down, we need to raise a generation to respect life in the womb. Esta victoria es para nuestra comunidad hispana. Y si tanto orgullo tenemos de nuestra gente, debemos de defender la vida. Si tanto orgullo tenemos de nuestra cultura, de nuestros valores, de nuestras raíces, debemos de defender nuestra gente. Porque la vida no tiene precio. Thank you so much. And now, Web Steve Scalise. <laughs> que siempre ha defendido la vida también. Es un orgullo para mí presentarlo, porque necesitamos más personas como él, que entiende el valor, no solamente de nuestra comunidad aquí en este país, pero que defiende la, la vida de nuestra comunidad hispana, que para mí es muy valiosa. Siempre tendré orgullo de donde soy, de quien soy, de mi familia. Gracias, Steve Scalise, por siempre defender la vida de nuestra comunidad. Thank you for always defending the life of the unborn. Thank you so much, Lara. What an historic day this is, and, and what a great victory for life. And, and it's not just a victory for life, it's a victory for millions of people who have been part of this pro-life movement for decades, who have gone to state legislatures, who have gotten involved in the political process, who've prayed, and prayers were answered today. Uh, the decades of work is celebrated today, but the work just begins now to go and protect life even more, because the Supreme Court's decision overturning Roe v. Wade 
correcting that flawed decision finally allows states and Congress to protect life in ways that we never were able to for the last 50 years. That debate was silenced during the years Roe v. Wade was the law of the land, but that debate just begins again in so many places in this country. You know, one of the most inspirational days of the year is the March for Life. It's a day where thousands of young people come to Washington, not to cause violence, but to celebrate life and to pray and work that we can end abortion in this country. Because for many of them, the first picture they have themselves is in their mother's womb. And so when we celebrate this victory, I think back to 2006 when I was a state representative in Louisiana, and I co-authored a law that I wondered if I would ever see implemented. That law says if Roe v. Wade is overturned, then abortion would end in Louisiana. It was signed by our Democrat governor, Kathleen Babineau Blanco. Because you see, life across this country has been a bipartisan battle. People in the pro-life movement have been bipartisan. When you see the debate up here, unfortunately, it's become partisan because the far left has tried to shut down this debate. But in so many states, Republicans and Democrats come together to support life. And I'm so proud to say that right now, in my state, that law from 2006, even strengthened by recent actions, will now become law today. I wondered if I would see that, but I now see that moment. And about a dozen other states are going to have their sim similar laws take effect right now on this historic day. And many other states are going to start a renewed debate that had been shut down for decades, but finally begins anew. God bless life. God answers prayers. And with that, let me bring up our leader. Kevin McCarthy. Only a few of us are speaking today, but I hope you acknowledge everyone who's standing behind us. I hope you acknowledge everybody who's sitting at home saying the exact same words that we are. You know, today's Supreme Court decision in Dobbs is the most important pro-life ruling in American history. By a vote of six to three, the court affirmed that the power to protect unborn life is returned to the people and their elected representatives. The people have won a victory. The right to life has been vindicated. The voiceless will finally have a voice. This great nation can now live up to its core principle that all are created equal, not born equal, created equal. Americans celebrate this historic victory because we know it will save the lives of millions of children and it will give families hope. But as encouraging as today's decision is, our work is far from done. Americans remain one of only seven countries on earth that allow elective abortions in the third trimester. Of those seven countries that America's one of them, there's two others, China and North Korea. That is radical. The House Democrats continue to support it against the wishes of the American people. This Congress, every House Democrat has voted for extreme policies, like taxpayer-funded abortion on demand until the point of birth. But Democrats' radical agenda does not have America's support. To the contrary, America rejects it because they remain committed to our values and our principles. The Supreme Court was not bullied by the far-left mob. Threats of violence against the justices did not win. And the truth is, pro-life Americans are not planning a night of rage. <laughs> The, rea the reaction to this principal decision by the court, it must be peaceful. And the DOJ must step up to protect our justices, yes. their families, yes. churches, and pro-life pregnancy centers from unprovoked violence. To the DOJ, do not be silent. Do not stand back and uphold the rule of law. We live in a country 
that is based on the dignity of all human life. With that, we'll take some questions. Yes, ma'am. General Hardy, Justice Thomas, as part of this ruling, has said that he wants to revisit things like the Supreme Court's decision on gay marriage, and he wants to revisit that in light of Roe v. Wade. What do you all think of that? The Supreme Court is a different branch of government. They can look at whatever comes before them. I just know in what we are doing, what we have today, is that life matters. That for so them? many years, life has stood up. But would you also yes, those ma'am. Being the Supreme Court is a separate branch of government. They take their positions, yes. If you are speaker and you're what are some of the that you have? Well, first and foremost, I believe in saving every life possible. Look at what we have done. Hyde Amendment, but more importantly, look at what the Democrats have done. For decades, that was a bipartisan position. Why did this new radical agenda, when the Democrats took the House, the Senate, and the White House, even the President Biden, who had supported that, remove that? Look at Ann Wagner's bill. And when you look at what we can do, we will continue to look wherever we can go to save as many lives as possible. Yes. Uh, well, Peter, Peter you, you touched on this a little bit, but. Uh, Current laws are still in place right now, but the Attorney General is just not doing anything about it in plain politics. What would you want to tell him specifically? I would tell him in less than 140 days, things are going to change here. And he will have now a Congress that will call him up. He will now have the ability of a Congress to have oversight. He will now have a Congress that will hold him accountable. Thank you all, and most importantly, to America. I continue to pray, one, for the safety of everyone, but more importantly, we now have a voice for all life. Thank you and God bless.